smack her around. I, uh, I tickle her. She hates that, but praise God. Amen. Amen. Tickle them feet. Hallelujah. That's a weakness right there. Amen. So we're still loving one another. But in this we have learned and are still learning that the ways of the Lord are right. Paul told the church at Thessalonica that, that sanctification, to be separate from this world, to be separate from immorality. How many Christians today say they love the Lord or in church on Sunday and then Sunday night they're out of the clubs? No amens. Come on now. Hallelujah. Just hide it. Say amen. Be the strongest one. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How many Christians say they love the Lord but some of the best liars that has ever been produced can lie so well that it has conviction behind it. How many Christians steal? How many Christians cheat? When I first started paying my income taxes, they told me, they said, well, you can claim anybody and the government will give you back money. I said, that's not right. They said, they don't know. I said, well, I know. So I wouldn't claim false dependents because they, at that time, they didn't require social security numbers. The year you may laugh at this and smile, but it's true. The year that the U.S. government came out and said every dependent you claim has to have a Social Security number, they lost something like 25 million dependents. Just disappeared. Because folks were claiming a dog. They were claiming a parrot. They were claiming a goldfish. They were claiming every and anything as dependents. But see... The end does not justify to me. You can cheat and lie, but see, God's still going to hold you accountable. That's why many Christians are not getting ahead in life because they are so de deceitful and devious and cunning. Praise the Lord. And they say, oh, God ain't blessing me. He can't. So if you want the blessings of God, then you need to walk as you say you are. Stop lying. Stop cheating. Stop stealing. Praise the Lord. Let me deal on this here before I get off of this here. Adultery is adultery is adultery is adultery. Fornication is fornication is fornication is fornication. That doesn't change. And I've heard many men say, well, it's all right as long as I don't touch. I can look all day. Lord say, when you conceive it in your heart, it's already sin. So when you're looking at another woman, it's like, oh, I wish. Oh. Yeah, you just sin. And don't think I'm just going to get on the men, get on the women too. Some women don't even remember who their husband is. There's so much in comforting and coaxing and flirting with every other man that they forget who their husband is. Praise, I know that don't apply to any of your angels here. Praise the Lord. So, oh, hallelujah. Don't take it like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But as my grandma would say, if the shoe fit, wear it. Praise the Lord. And so we're trying to lift up Jesus Christ, but we're walking the way of the world. We're, we're, we're watching programs on television that are glorifying homosexuality, and we're lifting them up as being heroes. Uh, what's the name of this show? Um, uh, oh, here I go. I'm getting in the shows. And if you watch it, then oh, hallelujah. Uh, what's the name of that thing? Uh, uh, it was a guy who used to be uh, uh, Doozy Dookie Hauser. He was, a, he was a young teenager who was a medical doctor. Dookie, Doozy Hauser, whatever his name is. Anyway, I've been told he's on this show called uh, uh, How I Caught Your Mama, How I Pet your mama, how I met your mama. He, he's on. He's on that show. He showed up at the uh, Oscars or the some awards a couple of months ago. He showed up with his uh, um, what do they call him? Partner. He showed up with his partner, and he's he's lifted up as being a hero. Mister, whatever your name is, if if you if you by chance. Look, I'm going to tell you something. 
I love you enough to tell you the truth. Get out of that lifestyle. Let Jesus Christ move on your heart and make a man out of you. Okay? Let Jesus Christ heal you, save you, and set you free. And you won't need another man to be your partner. God will be your partner. God will be your lover. God will be your joy. God will be your peace. Praise the Lord. Let me move on. Praise the Lord. First Peter chapter 15. Be ye holy. If it was impossible for us to walk in holiness, the Holy Spirit would not have moved on Peter's heart in order to, to present it in the word of God to us. Holiness is not something that we can bring about ourselves. Holiness comes about as a heart is yielded and broken before God. Holiness comes about as you realize it is not you, but it is Christ in you. We have many challenges that we face as a family, as a ministry. And if we veer off to, to somehow work this out ourselves, then down the road, it's going to be a train wreck. In the same way in your life, there are no shortcuts to serving the Lord. None at all. And the Lord told me many years ago, he said, son, he said, I called you to be a preacher. I didn't call you to be a spokesman. He said, you are to preach my word and preach it without fear, preach it without favor. But he said, you better preach it with love. Those people that hear you better know that you love them, that you are never condemning them but that you love them. Because the gospel is simple. It is one beggar telling another beggar how to get bread. I'm telling you that the source of your strength, the source of your blessing, the source of your hope is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The help that you need comes through the cross. The joy that you need comes through the cross. The blessing that you need comes through the cross. The bills that you need paid Come through the cross. If you need a husband, you need a wife, whatever you need, it comes through the cross of Calvary. And it may not come, as I, song, I sung earlier, it may not come when you think it should come. But if you keep on believing God, it will come. He will make a way. He will open doors. Let me close with this here. All of us in here, probably I know all of you by the internet, you have loved ones that if you're saved, you have loved ones that are not saved. You have friends that are not saved. People that you care about are not saved. But I want to take you back to a white-haired grandmama who impacted and affected my life. Growing up in the South, as I did, there were so many opportunities for me to be involved in the gangs and be involved in drugs and be caught up in the illicit lifestyles that were brewing in poor neighborhoods, which are still happening today. In city after city after city, town after town after town, the young folks are being caught up in the life. And all around me, my friends were, were being caught up in the drug scene, marijuana, LSD at that time was very popular. Hashish. They were caught up in it. All types of pills, they were popping. And little did I understand that, that there was somebody who was praying for me to keep me from this life. I had a friend in junior high school, a gifted runner, very, very talented individual. Extremely gifted in football and track. He could have gone on to any major college at that time on a full scholarship. Even though he was in junior high school, he had that gift. In the summer of my eighth grade year, one of my friends came to me and he said, Did you hear about and gave his name? I said, No. He said, He died. I said, I just seen him few months ago. He said, yes, he died. He said he was sniffing aerosol, had a plastic around his head, and he was spraying aerosol contents in the plastic. And he said he died instantly. And aerosol sniffing is still happening today. But my grandmama was on her knees 
he's praying. He's saying, God, boy, I got a call on his life. You see, prayer is powerful, folks. Prayer is powerful. My wife and I prayed for our kids, prayed and, and still pray for them that God will keep them because we know that, that they have potential in their life. We know that, that they have gifts in their life. I'm not bragging or boasting. They just, I know what's in their life. Our youngest son, he's not operating this yet, but I believe God he will. He has a gift to see into the spirit realm. He did it when he was a little child.